used a lot. Um, we throw this term a lot. We, it's a pretty popular word. So I want to make sure that we fully understand this term. Um, so it's unfavorable or unfair treatment of a person or class of persons in comparison to others who are not a member of that protected class. Um, so we'll, uh, like I said, we'll go into a little bit about a protected class. But for example, um, one of the most commonly known forms of discrimination would be based off of someone's race or skin color. So that is something that would apply here. Treating one person different, whether it's worse or better, because of a protected class, which would be, which um, race is considered to be one of those. Um, retaliation for opposition to discriminatory practices, complaining about prohibited conduct or participating in an EEO complaint, um, investigation or a reasonable accommodation process. Um, so retaliation for standing up or opposing or reporting, um, bringing attention to any type of unfair or unfavorable treatment based off of, of your different protected classes is another form of discrimination as well. And that is also something that um, the EEO policy oversees. Um, keep in mind that unfair treatment is not necessarily unlawful discrimination and treating a person unfavorably in comparison to others may violate civil rights laws only when that person's protected status is, in factor, is a factor in that treatment. So um, what that goes to say is should you feel that um, you're being treated differently because that person simply just doesn't like your personality or there's a conflict of personalities, you guys don't get along, but it's not related to one of your protected classes, um, then that is something that wouldn't be considered discrimination. Um, and that's not necessarily something that would involve your EEO officers. However, um, that doesn't mean that if you're not 100% sure that you shouldn't bring it up to our attention, um, we're here to we're here as a support for you guys. We're here to consult you guys. So even if you're unsure, um, feel free to reach out to us to have that conversation. Harassment. Um, so harassment is the use of vulgar language, abusive acts, or abusive acts or language, hostility, physical aggression, or intimidation. And this covers sexual harassment, which is related to a person's and protected classes. Um, so this also goes to maintaining that healthy and safe working environment. Um, harassment as it relates to one of your protected classes is something that is also um, under the purview of the EEO policies as well. And retaliation. Um, so I spoke a little bit about retaliation earlier, but retaliation or behaviors that may be considered, behaviors that may be considered retaliatory in, um, include, but are not limited to threats, reprimands, negative evaluations, harassment, refusal to hire, Denial of promotion or job benefit, denial of promotion or job benefits, demotion, suspension, discharge, negative references to prospective employers, or other actions affecting the terms, conditions, or privileges of employment. Um, so this slide talks about some of the federal anti-discrimination laws and protections. And what you have here are different examples of protected classes. So your race and color, sex genetic info, age, military status, pregnancy, religion, disability, citizenship. These are all examples of protected classes and things that cannot be used as factors to decide how, how fast or how slow you progress in the workplace. They can't be used as factors to decide how you're treated and your overall experience. These, these attributes that you have should not be considered um, when when going through your day-to-day -day motions, when it, when going through your experiences in the workplace. Um, and there's different levels of law that add to these protected classes. So for example, the New York State Human Rights Law, um, anti-discrimination protections are contained in Section 296 of the New York State Executive Law and referred to as the New York State Human Rights Law. And you also have the New York State Labor Law, Section 20C-C, Nursing mothers have the right to express milk in a private place for up to three years following the birth of a child. Um, what's I don't want you guys to focus too much on which law protects which protected class, but what I would like you guys to have a general understanding of is what protected classes are. Um, what are some of the things about you that would be considered a protected class? so that you are able to recognize what an EEO violation may look like. Um, so 
New York state human rights laws provide all of the protections provided by federal law in addition to arrest and conviction, sexual orientation, and victim of domestic violence. So again, these are factors that should not be giving you advantages or disadvantages within the workplace. Um, and these are factors that should you feel are being considered um, negatively or positively within your workplace are things that you would want to bring to the attention of your EEO officers. Um, so New York City's human rights law contain all the protections provided by federal and state laws. And then in addition, that would be partnership status, unemployment status, credit history, and caregiver status. So again, um, don't focus too hard on which laws protect which protected, protected class, but just take this information as a general guide of what a protected class is. New York City Equal Employment Opportunity Policy. So should you want more information or want the um, policy itself, please feel free to check out the link here um, and everything is displayed there for you. Um, so the New York City EEO policy prohibits discriminatory actions against and treatment of city employees and applicants for employment on the basis of actual or perceived of the following protected classes. Um, so what this goes to show is that if someone is um, conducting discriminatory actions against someone else based off of a perceived protected class, so meaning whether or not that protected class actually applies, it's still in violation of the EEO policy. For So for example, if a colleague is facing discrimination in the workplace because they may be of African descent, for example, or they appear to be of African descent, but actually are not, um, then that would still be a violation. So if you if this, if the discrimination is happening on the basis of a protected class, then it is a violation of the policy, regardless of whether or not that person experiencing the discrimination is actually a member of that particular protected class. There are also specific protections under the city's EEO policy pertaining to sexual harassment and discrimination based on disability, religion, retaliation, and statuses as a victim of domestic violence, sex offenses, and stalking. So, the Manhattan Borough President Office EEO policy requires that all employees must be trained in the requirements of the EEO policy, must receive a copy of the EEO policy handbook about EEO, what you may not know, and treat their coworkers and members of the public respectfully and to be sensitive to the effects of their behavior on those around them. So it's generally being conscious of those that are around you, being conscious of the language that you use and what could be perceived as offensive, regardless of your intentions, um, as well as the first two points, making sure that you have access to that EEO policy handbook and that you are trained in the requirements of EEO, which is what we're working on today. So who is covered by the city's EEO policy? And this is now we're making full circle to that first slide, which is everyone who works within New York City government or its workplaces and job applicants. And that includes CB members and staff. So whether you're a member, a staff member, a volunteer, an intern, you are protected under these policies. Even if you haven't been hired yet and you're going through the application process, these protections apply to you. So types of conduct that could violate the city's EEO policy. Decisions, actions, or practices based on an individual's actual or perceived status that un unlawfully affects the terms or conditions of their employment or potential employment within the city of New York. The policy also prohibits city employees from aiding, abetting, inciting, compelling, or coercing any person present within a city facility, whether or not an employee of, of the city from, in, from engaging in any conduct prohibited by the EEO policy, including conduct that creates a hostile work environment based on any protected basis. So even if you are a step removed from the particular discrimination that's taking place, um, if you push a subordinate of yours to treat someone else unfair unfairly based off their protected class, then that does not remove you from the EEO policy. You are still involved in that violation. Um, so whether or not you're doing it directly or indirectly, it still falls under the EEO policy and could still be um, potentially a violation of that policy. Um, so you really want to make sure that you are not um, 
that you're not outwardly doing any discrimination based off of protected class or encouraging, pressuring, or coercing someone else to conduct discrimination on your behalf. And on the flip side of that, you want to try um, to be aware of whether or not the discrimination is coming um, from just that one person, or if it may be coming from further above or from a, or from um, other colleagues as well. Um, another aspect that I'd like to mention here are extensions of the workplace where the EEO policy still applies. Um, so whether or not you're in your home-based location, your home office, or you're in a field location, or an off-site city social function, or in a city vehicle, or facilities where city government is being conducted and discussed, then that still places you under that EEO policy umbrella. Um, so if you're at a social, a city social function, a holiday, a city holiday party, for example, um, that EEO policy still takes place there, even if you're not necessarily conducting your official duties. Um, if you're in a city vehicle going from the office to a field location, that these EEO policies still apply. Um, so please keep in mind that whether or not you're in the office or um, conducting business outside of the office, these are policies that still take that still are in account. Um, and you want to make sure that whether or not you're in the office, we're all working towards a safer and healthier work environment. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the responsibility of the managers and supervisors. So e city's EEO policy requires that managers and supervisors make every effort to maintain a work environment that fosters sensitivity and respect for the diversity of all individuals in the workplace. Managers and supervisors must be aware of risk factors and take appropriate steps to prevent sexual harassment. Um, so these, some of these responsibilities can include cooperating with EEO officers during an investigation if we are requesting time to meet with someone who submits a complaint, um, receiving training in EEO laws, um, encouraging subordinates to consult with an EEO officer. So should a subordinate report a potential EEO violation to a supervisor, the supervisor should be encouraging that um, subordinate or that employee to reach out to us. Um, supervisors should be maintaining confidentiality, confidentiality with all EEO matters. Um, confidentiality is a very important aspect of this entire process. Um, and we really expect the supervisors to maintain that confidentiality as well. Um, and then perform managerials and supervisory responsibilities in a non-discriminatory manner. So an important note, the city and its agencies may discipline conduct that violates the city's EEO policy, even if the conduct does not violate a law prohibiting discrimination. Um, so this goes back to those different levels of law going all the way down to, this, to the policy, which isn't actually law. Um, just because you're not breaking a codified law, whether it's a federal, state, or city law, doesn't mean you're not breaking the policy, and the city can still um, go through disciplinary action for violations of the EEO policy. Um, actions directed at a particular person or group or behavior directed at one owns group may violate this policy. So even if you are a part of the protected class that um, others feel you are being discriminatory towards, um, that can still be a violation of the policy. Being a member of that specific class does not absolve you from violating policy. Um, the policy not only protects individuals from, from prohibited conduct because of their own protected status, but also protects individuals from, conduct, from conduct motivated by the actual or perceived status of those with whom they're associated. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the sexual harassment aspect of this. So sexual harassment is a form of discrimination prohibited by law and is included under the EEO policies. Federal guidelines describe sexual harassment as unwelcomed sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical contact. Sexual harassment may involve indiv individuals of the same or different genders, um, and a broad range of behavior may be considered sexual contact, um, sexual harassment. Um, so quid pro quo, this for that, submission to or rejection of the conduct for, uh, is the basis for either continued employment or for decisions affecting pay, benefits, or advancement opportunities. Um, so this is considered a form of sexual harassment. If you, if, um, if, if uh, your sex, your gender is being used as leverage for employment, gain and employment, 
for a gain in employment, for maintaining your employment, um, for to either prevent some some sort of negative interaction in the workplace, then that is something that would be considered quid pro quo, this for that. And that is definitely something that you would want to report to your EEO officers. And it's something that's not always um, recognized as sexual harassment within a workplace. So this is something we really want to emphasize to all. Um, so I'd like for you guys to quickly scan through these 14 options and in the chat, just drop the number of an example of what could be considered an example or what could not be uh, considered an example of sexual harassment, excuse me. So um, take, a, oops, excuse me, take a couple seconds, go through the 14 options and just drop in the chat some things that are not considered a option, an example of sexual harassment. And if there, if you don't see, if none of these options apply, then leave a zero. So you can drop those in the Q&A and I can read them out uh, to Xavier as we move forward. Thank you, Porfirio. Okay, so we have, we're getting some responses. Okay, I'm seeing they're all examples. I'm seeing none of them are examples. Um, I see that nine is listed as an example. Oops, excuse me. So, so these could all be considered examples of sexual harassment. Um, Sexual harassment can appear on different degrees of severity. Um, they could be unwanted touches, even if the um, person that did the touch had no particular malicious intent behind it. Sexual harassment could be a repeated rep a request for dates. Um, some of the items that may not be considered sexual harassment by many, but could also very well be an example of sexual harassment are terms of endearment that many people use very frequently, such as honey, dear, or sweetheart. A lot of these um, examples are really dependent upon context. Um, so it's all about consent. You wanna make sure that the way you're interacting with people um, is in a consensual way. You wanna make sure that you have permission to interact, in the, to interact with that person, whether it's through your language or through your body language. Um, if, for example, if someone lets you know that they aren't comfortable with terms of endearment and you continue with those terms of endearment, um, those could be that could be considered an example of sexual harassment. Um, so however, someone else may be comfortable with those terms of endearment um, and may not communicate any form of discomfort with that. So it really is contextual. It really is about communication. Um, so that's why we really encourage you, if you're ever unsure, to consult with us, your EEO officers, and we can always have that conversation. Other forms of harassment. And thank you for your participation, everyone. Other forms of harassment. The city's EEO policy prohibits any harassment based on an individual's gender or any other protected characteristic, such as race, color, religion, national origin, age, disability, marital status, sexual orientation, et cetera. And I really wanna put emphasis on the et cetera portion because that's not an exhaustive list. Um, there are many other characteristics that are protected or protected classes. Um, so look at these examples to give you an idea of what these protected classes are um, and take note that there are, there are other considerations as well. For harassment to be considered unlawful, it must be all of the following. Related to a protected class, unwelcome, offensive to a reasonable person in the recipient's position, and when a person is treated less well than other employees based on a protected category, and the conduct is not a petty slight or a trivial inconvenience. A hostile work environment. Um, the conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance, creating intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environments. So um, hopefully none of us have to go through this, but let's say you do feel that you need to file a complaint because you either are experiencing 
a form of discrimination as it relates to your protected class or you're observing one? How do you do that? Who can file a complaint? A employee or an applicant for employment can file a complaint or consult with an agency EO officer, myself or Maite, um, or a manager or a supervisor. Filing a complaint, so complaints can be filed against a manager, a supervisor, a coworker, or an independent contractor, consultant, or a vendor. Complaints must be made within one year of the incident that you're complaining about, so it doesn't have to be immediate. Um, you don't need to report it immediately after. You have up to a year to report, um, to file a complaint. You can file a complaint anonymously by calling or writing the EEO officer. Um, and if you request your identity be concealed, the EEO professional investigating the complaint will attempt not to reveal it. Um, so you can request that your identity remain anonymous throughout the investigation. Um, the investigation may involve um, conducting interviews of identified witnesses. Um, and throughout these processes of interacting with other people that are involved in the situation, whether they're the ones that are being accused of conducting the EEO violation or just other witnesses that may have been present. Um, we'll always try to conceal the identity of the complainant um, should they request it. Where else can you file a complaint? So you can file a complaint externally with one of the civil rights enforcement agencies. So here are a list of other agencies that you can submit an EEO complaint. Um, we are not your only avenue to follow up on a complaint or to file a complaint. Um, excuse me, we're not your only av avenue to file a complaint. Um, should, for whatever reason, you don't feel comfortable reporting a complaint to myself or Maite or your supervisor, these are other options um, to go through these avenues and to ensure that you're protecting your workspace. All complaints, investigations, and requests for reasonable accommodations and records will be handled to the greatest extent pos uh, possible in a manner that will protect the privacy interest of those involved. So we do our best to keep these investigations confidential. We do our best to keep them private. Um, we are not going around gossiping about these investigations with coworkers. Um, this is something that remains very concealed. Um, so please be assured that should you file a complaint with us, um, we're not immediately going to go to the person that you're complaining about or um, go to your supervisors. We do our best to only involve those that must be involved. So um, really important, who are your EEO officers? Um, I am your EEO officer, Xavier. Um, I see that we're missing Maite's information. She may be okay. Um, so I will drop in the, or put a video, if you can do me the favor and drop in the chat, uh, Maita's information as well, her phone number and email address. Maita is our deputy EEO officer. So should you- Yeah, it's on this slide. Uh, uh, we could see it. Oh, the, now I can see it. Pardon. My, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's right over it. Perfect. Thank you so much. So Maita You're is here, um, our deputy EEO officer. Um, feel free to reach out to either myself or to Maita relating um, to file a complaint or to look for a, a bit of additional guidance on something that you're unsure is a complaint, um, we are here to have that open dialogue with you. You don't need to come with us, to come to us having a complete case with evidence um, compiled. Just start that conversation and we're here to work with you guys. Um, some of the other contacts here are a part of the EEO team. Uh, they may not necessarily be involved in the investigations aspect, but they're also here to help support you. And that um, includes, for example, Kimberly James, who's our disability rights coordinator. So should you ever need to request a reasonable accommodation, um, Kimberly James is the person you'd want to reach out to. Um, but feel free to reach out to your EEO officers as well. We can always point you in the, direct, in the correct direction should it not be a um, EEO matter. Um, thank you guys for attending. If there are any questions, please drop them in the chat and I will do my best to answer them here. Um, I don't know, Porfirio, if you want to give a certain time limit to see if there are any questions or how you'd like to handle that in this presentation. Sure. Uh, first of all, Xavier, what I would like to do is thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Um, as you all know, our office takes this very seriously, which is why we make it a requirement for all board members to take this uh, webinar and session every year. Um, so we thank you. Uh, we hope you've learned something here. Um, it's good to know that New York City has its protected classes and um, how important EEO and having policies in place 
you know, are necessary. Um, you know, we, we believe these policies are important. Um, and again, which is why we're required to be a part of our training every year. I do want to let you know that this actual uh, webinar will be available on our YouTube channel at the end of all our sessions. So you will have the opportunity not only to review it, but also if you um, want to have and forward it to your other community board members, you know, it will be available on our YouTube, Manhattan Borough President's YouTube channel. I also want to take a uh, an opportunity to thank the Borough President, Mark Levine, for uh, allowing us and the Community Affairs team to uh, do these sessions for everyone. We want to thank the Deputy Borough President, Keisha Sutton James. We want to thank the Director of Community Affairs, Eric Cuello, who leads our Community Affairs team and the, our liaisons. Again, Xavier, thank you so much for putting this very yes. informative thing together. Um, and uh, I, I, I actually remember you doing this last year, and it's uh, very, very focused and I think, I hope, helpful to everyone. Um, and Peter Torrey, we want to thank you for being here for support as well. Um, I see no questions in the chat, and yes. I know it's midweek. So if there are no further questions, or if you have further questions, you could always email them to Eric Cuello or myself or through your liaisons at your local community boards um, that represent our office. So uh, without further ado then, I guess, thank you for being here and for participating with us at the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Thank you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>